We speak of Apollo in terms of fire and thunder, of the silent vacuum of space, and the footprints left on a dusty lunar surface. We recall the names of the astronauts, the engineers, the visionaries. But before a single rocket motor roared, before the first stage ignited, before the Saturn V could even stand, it had to be built. And to build a giant, you need a giant, a house for a rocket, a cathedral for technology. This is the story of the ground, the story of the earth that held the ambition of an entire nation, the story of the ground assembly building and the machines that carried the future on their shoulders. In the early 1960s, NASA's engineers faced a problem that was, at its core, one of geometry and scale. The Saturn V was not just a rocket. It was a vertical city of steel and propellant. At 110.6 meters, or 363 feet tall, it was taller than a 30-story skyscraper and no building on Earth was big enough to assemble it. You couldn't roll it out of a hangar on its side. You had to build it standing up. The concept was born out of a simple, hard truth. A rocket that big, once fully stacked, was too fragile to survive the journey from a horizontal assembly building to the launch pad. It had to be built in one place and moved vertically to another. That simple logic led to the creation of the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB. They chose a location on Merritt Island, Florida, a desolate marshy landscape. The ground itself was a challenge. To support a structure this immense, they had to sink 4,225 steel pilings, each driven up to 50 meters or 160 feet deep into the bedrock. On top of that, they poured 160,000 cubic meters or 210,000 cubic yards of concrete for the foundation alone. The sheer scale of the structure is difficult to grasp. The VAB's volume is 3.6 million cubic meters or 129 million cubic feet. It's so large that without precise climate control, the high humidity of Florida could cause condensation to form inside its upper reaches. The building was essentially big enough to create its own clouds. The four massive doors at the front, each 139 meters or 456 feet high, were, at the time, the largest doors in the world they took 45 minutes to open and close. Inside this cavernous space, a symphony of engineering played out. Over a thousand engineers, technicians, and riggers worked around the clock on different platforms at different heights. The vehicle assembly building was a factory a testing center, and a final staging area all rolled into one. Here, the three main stages of the Saturn V were hoisted into place using two massive overhead cranes, each capable of lifting 250 metric tons or 275 US tons. These cranes were so precise they could lift the immense stages with a gentle, deliberate grace stacking them one upon the other with tolerances measured in millimeters. The final act of the vehicle assembly building was the most critical. Once the rocket was fully assembled, its crude capsule placed on top, it had to be moved, not just to the launch pad, but onto the launch pad, without a single shutter, a single tremor. A task that required a machine as revolutionary as the rocket it carried. This is the Crawler Transporter, a machine that looks less like a vehicle and more like a moving fortress. 
weighing 2,721 metric tons, or 6 million pounds, it was the heaviest land vehicle ever built at the time. Its job was to pick up a mobile launch platform, a launch umbilical tower, and the entire Saturn V rocket, a combined weight of 5,400 metric tons, or 12 million pounds, and carry it all a distance of 5 to 7 kilometers, or 3 to 4 miles, to the launch pad. Each of its eight gigantic tracks had 57 individual shoes, each weighing almost 900 kilograms, or 1,984 pounds. It moved at a top speed of only 3.2 kilometers per hour, or two miles per hour, less than a brisk walk. A full trip to the launch pad took about six to eight hours. But speed was not the point, stability was. The crawler's sophisticated hydraulic jacking and leveling system kept the load vertical to within a remarkable 10 arc minutes, or 0.17 degrees. This was essential. A tilt of even a few degrees would have caused catastrophic structural damage to the rocket. The crawler was not just a transport, it was a statement. A declaration that no challenge was too great, no weight too heavy. It was a testament to the fact that for every visionary in mission control, for every hero in a spacesuit, there was an entire army of brilliant, hard-working people on the ground. They were the architects, the riggers, the crane operators, the men who designed a building to house a rocket and a machine to carry it. They are a part of the untold story of Apollo. To move a mountain, you need a monstrous heart. The crawler was powered by two 2,750 horsepower diesel engines, one for propulsion and another for hydraulics and electrical power. These were not just engines, they were power plants on wheels. They guzzled fuel at a staggering rate, and the entire machine was a symphony of hydraulic fluid, diesel, and raw power. This was a ground-based engine that rivaled the thrust of some smaller rockets. It was the unseen heartbeat of the entire launch, a testament to the immense power required to simply move the dream from one place to another. and it needed its own road to travel on. The Crawlerway was no ordinary highway. It's a massive, purpose-built road constructed of layers of asphalt and Alabama river rock. Why river rock? Because it was chosen for its low friction and durability, which helped prevent sparking, a small detail with potentially catastrophic consequences when you're moving millions of pounds of propellant. The Crawlerway itself is an engineering marvel designed to support the immense, concentrated weight of the crawler without sinking into the marshy Florida soil. It's a road built for giants, and it was a direct path to the heavens. The machine was nothing without the men who commanded it. The crawler was operated by a crew of around 30 engineers and technicians. This wasn't a joyride, it was a meticulous, high-stakes ballet. They operated complex control systems, constantly monitoring the leveling, propulsion, and steering. Imagine the pressure. You have the most expensive, powerful rocket in history on your shoulders, and you're moving it at a snail's pace every inch a calculated risk. It was a perfect marriage of machine and man, a symbiotic relationship where human expertise and mechanical brute force came together to perform the seemingly impossible. As the crawler neared the launch pad, the most critical part of its journey began. 
The final alignment was not a matter of a few feet or even a few inches. The crawler had to position the mobile launcher platform with astonishing precision, docking it with a network of hold-down arms and umbilical connections. This was done with the same hydraulic leveling system that kept the rocket stable on the move. The final leveling was so precise, it was literally a matter of millimeters. The difference between a flawless connection and a mission-ending catastrophe. This was not just movement, it was a form of architectural placement. A giant setting down its precious cargo with the tenderness of a jeweler. And so, when you look at the images of the Saturn V, poised and ready for liftoff, remember this. The journey didn't begin with fire. It began with steel, with concrete, and with the quiet, determined will of the giants on the ground.